Hey y'all, in this video I want to do a quick overview of Keek Locopy, what it is and how to get started with it. Keek Locopy is a tool with the goal of converting a React app to a Keek Loc beam. I won't be going in depth on what Keek Loc is in this video, but it's essentially an open source identity and access management solution which supports a variety of different authentication and authorization mechanisms out of the box. To understand Keek Locopy's role in developing custom themes, I think it's important to first know how Keek Loc themes work under the hood. Keycloak's documentation has some more detailed information on how to set up custom themes, but there are a couple important aspects in my opinion with relation to Keycloakify. To override a given theme, you have to provide Keycloak with a number of configuration files, but the ones that I'll be going into are the free marker templates. If we look inside the Keycloak source code, we can find that there are collections of themes for various built-in pages that they provide. For example, if we take a look at the login theme, we can see all the files that are part of the default login theme. Taking a look at one of these free marker templates, we can see that it's got a bit of a strange syntax compared to what you might be used to, but at the end of the day, it is templating out some HTML for a page. To implement a Keycloak theme, you need to create your own free marker template files for each of the pages that you want to override. If you've ever checked out the build output of a typical React app, you might be wondering how to create a free marker template from your React components. Additionally, if you take a look at the URLs of static assets for Keycloak themes, you can see that it contains a hashed URL. This hash is unknown until a Keycloak's build time, which further complicates your React app's build process. This is where Keycloakify comes in. As part of its build process, Keycloakify has a few clever strategies in place to convert your static asset references to the proper Keycloak URL at runtime. After patching static asset paths, Keycloakify will bundle your app into a set of free marker templates for your Keycloak theme. Finally, Keycloakify bundles everything up into a jar file that Keycloak can consume. These aren't the only things that Keycloakify helps out with but I think they are the most important for understanding why a tool like Keycloakify is necessary in the first place. Now that you have an idea of the value that Keycloakify provides, let's dive into development a bit. If you don't already have a Keycloak instance set up, the easiest way to get started is to copy the following into a new Docker file. Then build and run the image with a couple command args to make sure that you have an admin user you can log into. After a bit of time, you should see that the server started up and be able to access the admin console at localhost 88. Now that we have Keycloak set up, let's transition to getting Keycloakify set up for our custom theme. The easiest way to get started with Keycloakify is to clone the Keycloakify starter repo. We'll take a look at the source files in a little bit, but from here you should be able to install and build the Keycloak theme with yarn install and yarn build Keycloak theme. Once finished, you should see a jar file generated in the build Keycloak slash target directory. This jar file contains a Keycloak service provider interface that includes all the files you need to integrate your custom theme. To integrate the jar file, we'll modify the previous Docker file we used to include a build step for the Keycloakify jar. We then need to make sure the jar file gets copied into the Keycloak app's providers directory before building Keycloak. Once you've made those changes, rebuild and restart your Keycloak Docker container, and let's head back to the Keycloak admin console. Let's navigate to the client we want to apply the theme to. Scroll down to the login settings, select the Keycloakify starter, and don't forget to hit save. Now, if we navigate to the client's login page, we should be served up the Keycloakify app. You can tell from the document's title. That's pretty cool, but you might be wondering what next. If we head back to the Keycloakify starter app, we can see that it sets us up with a create React app setup. Taking a look at the KC app file, we can see that this defines the pages we're overriding within Keycloak. These names end up corresponding to the Keycloak theme free marker templates. As you can see, there's a React component definition for each of the pages we're overriding, and then using a fallback component to denote that we should use the default Keycloak theme for all other pages. If you're having trouble finding which page ID you need to be overriding, I recommend heading over to the Keycloakify storybook instance to get a better idea based on the page you're seeing. For a faster local dev cycle, you can also run npm run storybook from the Keycloakify starter app to develop your components in an isolated environment. Or head over to the KC context file and provide the export with some mock data before running npm run start. This was by no means an all inclusive list of features in Keycloakify, but hopefully, this was enough to get you bootstrapped using it. For a more complete list of features, check out the Keycloakify's documentation site. Happy coding!